Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to focus on building, building, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can create your own smart contracts from scratch, no prior knowledge needed on Zilliqa. And you have to watch this video all the way through because number one, you don't need any prior knowledge, it's all from scratch, it's very easy to understand and very easy to learn, so don't get afraid, don't get scared because we're going to be building things. Number two, you gotta realize that you have to try programming, you have to try building at least a bit, at least a tiny bit, because you understand that there are endless massive opportunities right now in blockchain and in crypto if you know a bit of programming, because this industry is young, and you know that when an industry is young, there are many low-hanging fruits, you gotta act on the opportunity, you you gotta be the guy or the girl who knows this stuff because this is very very rare knowledge and obviously if you have something that is rare on the marketplace you get highly massively rewarded so don't take this lightly follow this video and I will show you how to program on Zilliqa and speaking about rewards if you just watch this video till the end and you take this quiz by using your knowledge that I gave you in this video you take this quiz you can win 15 thousand zeal three people will win fifteen thousand zeal so that's basically free zeal for you and you get that just by learning by improving yourselves so it's very important you get rewarded for literally making yourself a more successful person so definitely don't miss out watch till the end to be in the quiz and to have the knowledge to be in the quiz also i will show you at the end zeal hive grants exactly how you can apply to zeal hive grants and this is in case you have a good idea you think you have some kind of concept that you want to make real, you want to implement in real world. It can be a DAP, it can be some kind of website, it can be some kind of project on top of Zill. Well, Zillica have this Zill Hive grants program and they have a pool of $5 million ready to be used, ready to be deployed instantly. So they can literally fund your way to success. And if you have missed the first video in the series, because this is the second one, this is the second video in the series we're doing together with Zillica, you should go and watch the first video it's called Zilliqa programming and here I teach you about why Zilliqa is important what is Zilliqa programming language and we do create quickly we quickly create the smart contract here as well but in this video we're going to take it a bit more slow I will explain to you a bit more in depth how the smart contract works and so on and so forth and you should of course know that we are working together with Zilliqa they are helping us create this series which is important and I even got the merch you see the merch it says built on Zilliqa so thank you so much Zilliqa for that merch very cozy for sure and the big congratulations to Jorin from Toronto Stefan from Helsinki and Nathan from Newport if you recognize your name here and your city please remember you won the quiz in the previous video so check your email you are the winners you will be contacted by Zilliqa and look all of you who are watching you can be the winner next time so watch till the end do the quiz really try to do it. <laughs> I very, very much encourage you. So as previously, we're going to be using id.zilica.com like we did in the last video. And when you come here, you see this kind of uh, layout, you see files, you see your message, welcome message right here. And then you see this empty area right here, which is like a console, but don't worry about that. The first thing you have to do is go here, click this button for creating a new file. As you can see, we have created a new file called untitled.zilla and you can double click to rename it. So in this case we're going to be building a smart contract for voting so let's just call this voting and I thought it's a great way to demonstrate how smart contract works because it shows why smart contract is important in the first place because when we do have voting right now for example when you vote in your general elections you have no clue whether your, your your vote has been counted or not I don't have a clue did they count my vote in the last election or not nobody knows nobody knows now obviously you could volunteer you know, if you live in a country where you have the system where you can volunteer and count the votes in the general election, maybe you have a bit more trust towards the system. But look, most of us, we don't volunteer. We have so much to do, like go and volunteering to count votes. It's, it's simple middle ages. Instead, we need to have something on the blockchain where when I vote, I can see that my vote has been counted. So we're going to learn Zilliqa and Silla by actually building something real, by actually building, for example, a voting smart contract. And obviously, nobody can tamper with smart contracts because there are they are apps running on a blockchain. It's all transparent, so you know how it works. You know that the counting of votes is honest. 
because you see all votes coming in on the blockchain and you see how the smart contract calculates the final result and that it's honest. So it's a perfect example of why we need blockchain. So voting and making decis decisions on chain is, is key feature. All right, guys, let's start programming. The first thing we will write is the version. It's always important to specify which version of Scylla you're using. And in this case, we're using version zero. And let me zoom in a bit so you can see a bit more clearly. Now, you can do a few empty lines in Scylla empty lines don't really matter so it doesn't matter if you do a few empty lines or just one or just two just do one that is the cleanest way and write the keyword contract so we are defining the smart contract and to tell Scylla that okay here is where the smart contract starts we write the word contract and then write the name of the contract so in this case it is voting and uh, within brackets after we've written the name, we open the brackets. And as you can see in this uh, website, in this IDE, uh, we can just open the bracket and it will close automatically. So they will pre-fill it for us. And that's exactly what we want because between these brackets, we define our immutable variables. Variables that we will never change after they are set when the smart contract launches. So in all smart contracts, we have mutable and immutable variables. Immutable variables cannot be changed. Why is it so? Because there are certain things that we know for sure will never change. So for example, in this voting smart contract, we will have an organizer. So there's always a person that launches the smart contract and that person is the organizer of the voting. So that person will have some privileges. For example, that person will be able to open up voting and he will be able to say, okay, now the voting is open. And he will also be able to close the voting and say, okay, now the voting is over. So we don't want somebody to hijack the smart contract and change the organizer. We know for sure that the organizer is immutable. Once the smart contract is launched, the organizer will never change. And in all programming languages, we have mutable, changeable, and immutable, unchangeable variables. And immutable variables are there for a reason, so that when you program, you tell the smart contract, you tell the programming language, hey, never change it. Even if I myself by mistake in the code, I forget for some reason that you should never change the organizer. Even if I myself in the code, when I develop the smart contract further, uh, change this variable, try to change the variable, you should tell me no. Ivan, this is an immutable variable. You told me that you should never change it. So it's for security reasons, for your own best. You should always define variables that you know are never going to change as immutable. So. In this case, we have the organizer, so we write the name, organizer, and we write colon, and we need to specify the type of this variable. So organizer is um, a, uh, an account, and uh, the type is byte string 20. So basically, it's an address. We are defining this variable, and um, this variable is is an address. So because of that, it will have the type byte string 20. All addresses are byte string 20. Now, the good thing with Scylla is that we can define endless amounts of these uh, immutable variables. So we can just keep writing because we will also have description as an immutable variable. And you know that uh, we don't want the description to change because uh, when I tell you guys, hey, we have this vote, we're going to decide on this specific matter and you can either vote yes or no. And then I change the description and now we're voting for something else because now I changed what this whole thing is about. That should never happen. And everyone should know that this smart contract will never change the description. The description is immutable. So this is also seen on chain. When you as a user, when, when you view this smart contract, uh, voting smart contract, you see on chain that uh, organizer and description, they are immutable. So there's no way to change. And description is text. So description is text. So that's why the type this time is string. Whenever you want to define text, you use the type string. Whenever you want to define address, you use the type uh, by string 20. So that's very simple. So now we have defined our two uh, immutable variables and you can add others here as well if your smart contract needs it. And now we can move on to our mutable variables. So immutable cannot be changed, but now we'll also have mutable. Now, in this case, we will have variables that change. For example, the yes and no vote counts. 
they will change because when somebody votes yes we increase the value of the total amount of people who voted yes and we store that okay now 10 people voted yes oh now another guy votes yes now it's 11 so we change it all the time that that value and then we have another mutable variable which is no votes basically counting everyone who voted no uh, and to define a mutable variable we use the keyword field so it's a reserved word in Scylla you can only use it to define uh, mutable variables. So by using that, we're telling Scylla, okay, this is mutable and we need to specify the name. So in this case, the name of the variable is yes count because we're counting how many people voted yes. And the type is going to be integer uh, two, five, six. So don't really care about this number. Uh, don't care about it. It's just how it's binary represented. It's different sizes. Uh, and there is int32, there is int256, there are a few of these integers. And um, later on, we'll talk more about exactly uh, when you should be using which. But for now, we will just be using 256. Uh, and integer is a number. So you remember, byte string 20 is an address. A string is text. And now you also know if you want to store a number, you use integer. And in this case, we're using integer 256. And so what we also can do is to uh, initiate this to zero so that when the smart contract launches, yes count will be zero. So write equal and then zero. But before zero, we also write int 256 to let Scylla know that this is the same type. So it's just to be super clear, just to be super clear that we're not making any mistakes, that we have this variable here of int 256 and we assign it to this value and that's also int 256. Now, the same thing we will do, but we will just rename the variable to no count. So now we have two mutable variables called yes count, no count. They're all zero from the beginning. And now we can move on and we can start talking about, uh, uh, about transitions. Now, if you come from traditional development, if you know traditional development, you know what transitions are. Transitions uh, are like functions. And maybe you haven't heard the word transition, but you know word function. So if you don't know anything about programming, don't worry, because it's very easy to understand. Transition is basically a piece of code that we can execute several times, that we can execute many times. So in this case, when somebody votes yes, we need to execute the code for increasing yes count. So this piece of code will be called and executed each time somebody votes yes. When somebody votes no, we will have code executing for increasing this number. So that's why we define a transition. We call it vote yes. Just like when we defined the uh, contract, we need to open and close brackets. In this case, they are going to be empty because we don't have any arguments. Later on, we will be working with functions that do have arguments, but for now, there are no arguments. And we also need to define the end of the transition. So we need to open transition like this. We need to specify the name. And then at the end, we just write end. And so here in between is the actual transition. Now, the only thing we have to do here is to add one to yes count. And uh, this is believe it or not, a bit complicated <laughs> in Scylla because it's functional programming. So they need to ensure that all types are correct. So first and foremost, we do this um, uh, constant right here uh, that we call 1, 2, 5, 6, and we set it to 1. So it, look, we need to add 1 to yes count. We define this uh, 1 as a constant uh, here. Then we need to create a temporary um, variable yes count temp and we put the value in yes count into yes count temp and as you can see we're using semicolons semicolons are only used within transitions so only within as you can see here we don't have semicolons it's only within transitions and between the different statements so here's a statement here's another statement and and we have um, semicolons between and then what we need to do is to create another temporary variable called yes count plus uh, one. Uh, and guys, if you come from traditional development, this will look strange to you because adding plus one to a number is, uh, is, is never this complicated in normal programming. But now it's not normal programming. This is blockchain, guys. This is, uh, this is functional programming. So what we have, have we done here? We have created a variable yes count plus one that is using a built-in procedure called the yeah, add called add and um, 
this procedure needs two parameters. One is the uh, the variable you want to add, and the second one is the number you want to add it uh, together to. So in this case, we're using this yes count temp and one, and so together they are now this final result yes plus count plus one, um, and finally we just need to assign yes count to uh, uh, we need to assign the value into yes count basically. So that is what we do right here. And we, of course, just write yes count plus one. So guys, I know it's, it's a bit complicated, but uh, it, this is functional programming. Uh, and uh, this is how Scylla works. Now it's important to note, we don't have semicolon in the last one because it's only in between, only in between uh, statements. So here we are in between, here in between, here in between, and here we don't have anything following. So we don't write call, uh, semicolon here. Uh, so that is how vote yes uh, transition looks like. And for all of you who are curious why we need all these steps to just add a number, it is because uh, Scylla is an intermediate level programming language. It's not low level, it's not high level, and it's a functional language. So that's why it is using a normal form, which is this type of grammar where you have an intermediary step before you do the final addition. And look, in the backend, when you have normal programming languages, this still happens on the backend. It's just that the compiler normally does this for you, these different steps. To save a bit of time in this video, I've just created an almost identical function called vote no. And as you can see, it's the same, but I've just uh, renamed everything to no count. And I'm changing the no count uh, field right here at the end of this um, uh, transition. So it's very simple, it's basically the same as this one, but with uh, renamed variables so that we're actually changing no. What we can go ahead and do right now is to click check. It will check our code and as you can see I get this green box saying contract has been successfully checked so we have no errors in our code. Then we can deploy by clicking here and right now I have the simulated environment selected which means that the smart contract will be run in our browser. We're actually not deploying on a real network, it's only in our browser. And as you can see, we need to specify the organizer and the description before we deploy the smart contract. So we still haven't deployed it. And um, you need to basically take a, an address that you control and here in this uh, environment, you see different addresses that you can use. So in this case, you see that I have this account selected. I can easily change the account, which I'm using, by the way. Uh, and as you can see, the balance will change as well. But what I want to do is just to copy this address. So I'm just copying it. And I click deploy again. Uh, and here I paste the address. And uh, here I paste, paste the description. So description, for example, let's vote about uh, should uh, should we eat uh, meat for dinner? Something, just <laughs> write something. What are, are we voting for? So let's see, deploy. Uh, and it's, it's done, it's done. Uh, look, what's important here is your contract address. As you can see, I have 0xe0014. Look at your left. And here is the smart contract because the contract address is matching. Uh, so you click here. You see that we have a uh, no count, zero. We have yes count, zero. We have organizer right here. We have description right here. And then we have a few other variables that are uh, behind the scenes, like the version, but this is the version, you know. Uh, but look, don't care about them because we didn't really set them as immutable. Uh, here are uh, the immutable variables that we actually set ourselves, and these really are behind the scenes. They're also immutable, but they're behind the scenes. Uh, and here are our mutable, no count and yes count. Uh, you see also our transitions. So for example, I can vote yes with my account, um, and I can call this transition. And uh, now when I view the contract again, uh, I will, or actually, I just close this, I open this. Uh, you now see I have yes count equal to one. So as you can see, I went ahead and uh, pressed vote yes a few more times because now yes count is three. And you can press vote yes again, and the vote count will increase. So now we will have yes vote equal to four. Yes, so it's a flaw in our smart contract because one user 
can uh, vote many times, endless amount of times. So I can also vote no. I just voted yes four times, now I vote no. <laughs> uh, so we need to add a restriction so that one address can only vote one time. And if you try to vote again, you'll get an error. Uh, and that is what we're going to do next. First and foremost, we need a data structure to hold the information about who has already voted. So we need a source of mapping that maps an address to a variable that is either true or false. And then when sub somebody votes, we set that mapping to true. So I know it might sound a bit complicated. Just follow me, just follow me. It's, it's easy, it's easy. So we defined a new field because it's a mutable variable. It's a mutable variable that we're gonna use. And the type is going to be map. So the name is voted and the type is going to be map because we map uh, addresses to Boolean. Addresses to Boolean. And so we need to define that, that. So we create a map and what is it? Is it is, It's from address. I know that address is by string 20 and to Boolean. And Boolean is a type we haven't spoken about yet, but basically it's just true or false true or false. So we need the structure to know that given an address, have we already voted true or false? So that is how it is. And we just initiate it to an empty, uh, empty, uh, empty mapping like this. So use the, the keyword empt, and then you just uh, write your types again. So now we have this mapping. Now, when we vote yes, we need to check whether we have already voted or not. And uh, if we have already voted, if the user who calls this function, this transition vote yes, already has an entry in this mapping and that entry is true, then we have already voted. And uh, that means that we cannot vote again. So here is the mechanic we need to do. We need to first and foremost define this variable already voted have we already voted or not and we read this variable once again we're using this arrow we read this variable from the state of the smart contract by accessing by accessing voted data structure and um, we just need to look up whether we have an entry for the address sender now sender is this special variable it's uh, defined in all transitions because it's just whoever called whoever called this trans uh, transition. So here we have this variable defined. We know now this is either true or false. Uh, and also we need to add this word exists. So basically we need to know does an entry exist in this mapping uh, for the address that called the function. And if it does, then it means that we have already voted. We've already voted. Uh, and here we need to check. If we already voted, we don't want to vote again. We want to throw an error. So we do it by using the keyword match. So basically we're matching uh, already voted. So we're matching this variable already voted uh, with either, with either, and here we have to use this special character, the pipe. You can find it on your keyboard because we need to compare it either to true. So if already voted is true, if we have already voted, this means that we need to throw an error. And it's very easy to do, you just write throw. So here the smart contract will stop, this whole transaction will be reversed and become non-valid. But if this is false, if we still haven't uh, voted, then we do what? We do all of this. So here's the logic. We only execute this if we have not already voted. And the final thing we have to do is to set this mapping to true when we have already voted. We need to tell Scylla, hey, this address has already voted so it cannot vote again. Once again, we need to define uh, true like this. Uh, it, and the reason I say once again is because we did it for one here. And uh, it's a bit special with Scylla, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, this is how it works. We need to define it if we want to use it later in, in order to assign uh, in order to assign it. Uh, 
and now we will have to assign it now i want to assign it into voted sender so i am basically saying hey change the mapping entry for this address in this data structure voted and set it to true like this uh, let's check the code is it working man there are errors let's see oh of course this is when you set things this is when you assign things you need to have uh, colon equal colon equal let's do it uh, more errors and yeah this one is easy we forgot to write end so when we when we use match uh, we need to end it like this so here's the beginning of match here's the end of match uh, checking the code and now it's green perfect and when it's green it means that i just copy all of this paste here uh, and uh, do like this and finally i need to copy this here as you can see i'm just copying everything over so it's exactly the same and then end of match here let's see check the code yes deploy it let's do it guys so we're deploying a new contract as you can see i'm gonna use this address again so i'm gonna copy this uh let's see deploy and the uh, organizer this one description uh do you like bacon deploy let's see okay as you can see contract address is 0x466 here is 0x466 as you can see here uh yes here it is uh, now, let's see, vote yes. By the way, before we do it, I just want to show you something. Look, we have this voted and it's empty right now, uh, as you can see. When I vote yes, look what happens. Da -da -da, and I open the smart contract again. Let's see. Uh, as you can see, if I open voted now, you see that uh, I have the address, my address added here, and it's true. And yes count is one. So as you can see, we have recorded that this address has already voted. If I try to vote yes again, this should not work. I get an error. I get this error. Uh, I can try to vote no. See, I also get error. See, you cannot vote more than once. But if I change the account to this one, for example, now I'm a different person. Uh, I can vote yes and it will work as you can see now we do have two yes counts and we have recorded that both of these addresses have voted uh, so they cannot vote again so guys that is how it is uh, as you see we have not used organizer uh, we didn't do any uh, special privileges because this became a bit longer than I thought uh, that is up to you if you want, create this additional feature, because I think you have enough knowledge to do it, create additional feature that organizer can start and stop the voting. So you need to create a new transition here that can only be called by the organizer. Uh, so that's up to you. Uh, but for now, we've done all of this. The final thing I want to leave you with is that, uh, look, don't get scared because this might look uh, scary. Uh, it's easy, at the end of the day, it's very easy. It's not, it's not difficult to get this. This is not rocket science, guys. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Participate in the quiz. Do it right now. Because this quiz is, by the way, very easy, much easier <laughs> than this thing right here. The quiz is way easier, guys. Uh, and finally, uh, if you have an idea, if you know how to build stuff, if you really, really are serious, go to zilica.com slash zeal hive you can also find in the description here's where you can learn build and accelerate basically you get funding they have five million dollar fund for investing in zilica projects also there is zilacracy zilacracy uh, here is more of a community initiative i think you should go to zilacracy.com and join here you can find different projects to join or you can um, uh, apply as a project yourself so look you get different community project stages this is also a very important resource and uh, that being said guys i hope you learned a lot i hope you enjoyed it and 
I'll see you all very, very soon. This is only the second video in our series about Scylla. So we will be back very soon. I think next week we'll be back. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.